Hey guys, this is going to be a pretty sweet video because we're going to be getting name, price, sorting by those guys, and also this search bar as we type filtering down what fields we see. Now, we could do this type of sorting. So when I click this button, what I'd like to happen is I'd sort by the price. And if I click it again, it sorts it the opposite way. And same for the name. And one approach that we could do for this is just do this sorting client side. What I mean by that is just sort the data that we get from uh, the server right here. So we could put it in our state and sort the state. But one thing I don't like about this is we need to think ahead when we add pagination. So when we do that, it's going to get everything from the server. And uh, we might not have the whole list. And if we don't have the whole list, we can't sort on the client side. So we're going to be sorting um, by sending a GraphQL query saying how to sort our data. And the way we can do this is just adding some stuff to the query we already have. Uh, we're calling that products query right now to get it. And there's some fields we're not utilizing. And one of the fields is order by. And in here I can specify an optional product order by input. And this is where I can put how I want it sorted. So let's go ahead and add this. So right here, I'm going to say, so this is our products query. I'm going to say query, and we're going to add a variable called order by. And I'm just going to copy the type that's over here, because this is the type that we want to pass in. And we're going to pass this to our products. So order by. Now, by default, we can save this, and nothing's going to change over here, because we're just passing null, right? We're not passing any variables in, and that's fine. We don't want to order by anything off the bat. So now, what I want to do is when I press this button for price, for example, um, I would like to get the data sorted. And the way you can do this with GraphQL or Apollo is there's a function called refetch that they give you, um, and this comes from the data object. And this is coming thanks to GraphQL and Apollo we can just call refetch and how refetch works is you just pass in the new parameters you want to change so for us we did not have uh, order by in the original query so we'd like to add that here so we're going to say order by and now we pass how we want to order when we refetch the data so when we refetch the data we want to order by the price and we want to say ascending for now so let's add that give it a save all right, so 11, 123, this number, and then 213. And all right, we see it does go ahead and reorder it for us, so nice. So now the next step is when I click on this, I want to get in reverse order. So another thing we can get from data is called variables. So we can see what variables we passed into this query. So I can say variables, and I can look for the order by and if it's equal to price.ascending um, then I want to make it price.descending otherwise I want to keep it price.ascending so here we're just doing a simple check um, seeing if we've already fetched this before um, with it price equal ascending if it is then we switch it to descending otherwise we keep ascending so let's see if this works and it looks like it's working to me. So here are the biggest numbers. We can scroll down, smaller at the bottom, and we could flip this the other way. So nice. So let's do the same thing for the name. And you guys are seeing how easy this was to actually add thanks to Prisma, right? Because they already had this order by. And I'm just going to paste it in. And it, oops, we got too much. And it's going to be the same logic, right? The only thing I'm changing is instead of the word name out or price, we're going to be using name. So I'm just going to copy and save that. And let's reformat this so it's easier to see. There we go. So same condition, but now we're checking it's the name. So let's do the price. Now I'm going to refetch by name. We can flip the name. Now we have W at the end. So cool. I think that's working nicely. So now we have both our sorting functions, name and price. The next thing that I want to do is uh, search. So if we come back over here, 
with our query, how would we do search? Well, there's another one called where that we can utilize. And in where, we can actually pass in a contains. So name.contains. And that's how we're going to do it. We're just going to pass a string of what is contained in that. So for that, we're going to need a new variable here. So this is just going to be, we call it query, for example, which could be a string. And, and you know what? I'm actually not even going to pass it in like that. I'm just going to call it where. And we can just copy this exact thing. And so it's going to be a product where input. That way we can pass null to it at the beginning and it work out well. So here I'm just going to pass where is equal to where. And now I'm just going to uh, rerun this, make sure we didn't break it by adding that. Cool. And now in my state, I'm just going to keep track of the query. So at first it's going to be an empty string. And then in my text field here, I'm going to say value is equal to this dot state dot um, query. And then we're going to say on change text. And I think that's how I did it. Um, yep, on change text. Looks like actually, okay, yeah, we just get it from the props. And I think they pass the name and the text in. For us, that doesn't really matter because we only have one text field here. So I'm going to say on change text and we'll go ahead and handle it here. So name, text, and this is really the our query. So I'm going to say this dot set state query is equal to text. So on change text, we call this dot on change. And so after we do this, we also want to, so we're updating the state, right? We also want to refetch. So we're going to say this dot props dot query, or sorry, not query, data dot refetch. So we're calling it in the same way here. We're getting this from the props, data, refetch, pass in our variables. And then here, our variable is going to be where, right? And then what do we pass to where? Well, we want to do name underscore contains, name underscore contains. And then this has a string, and the string is going to be the text. So give that a save. Nice, so now we're going to refetch with this where. All right, so let's give it a try. I have no idea if this will work. It should search every time we type a letter. So P, um, got only the P's, so P3. Um, another thing to think about is how we want these two to interact, right? So now we have name and price here. Um, doesn't look like it changes anything. Price. Okay, so it goes ahead and sorts it. I was thinking what it might do is just overwrite that we already fetched it with the P, but it looks like it doesn't. All right, so that seems to work nicely with integration. It might lag. No, it doesn't even lag that bad. What else can we search? Sally. All right, so I think our search is good now. Um, another way you could do this is instead of um, fetching every time the user types something like this, we could just wait and then for them to hit enter, right? Um, so type, 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 hit enter, and then do the search. But uh, typing like this every fetch is also kind of cool to see the results just pop up really fast. Um, so nice. I'm pretty happy with this. Let me know what you guys think about this. I think this is pretty sweet. Um, and that's all I wanted to do with sorting and filtering. We're now able to search and change by name and price. Um, stuff I want to look at next I mentioned was subscriptions and pagination. Not sure what I'm going to do next, uh, but one of those you'll be seeing tomorrow. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.